offering, yeah. So we, we thank the Lord for enabling yeah, at least Singapore yes, to be free from um, a surge in COVID. We continue to pray for especially the UK at this time. And for this strain, uh, a new strain that is supposedly much more contagious. And so we need to be constantly in prayer. But we know, friends, today, as we celebrate Christmas, and we think about Isaiah, the people in, who are in darkness have seen a great light. And Jesus is the light of the world. And so even in the midst of darkness, this cloud over this strain, we have this solid hope. Amen? Amen. So as we continue in this season of Advent, we actually have been lighting a candle every week. Uh, the first candle signifies, can you shout it out? Hope. Second candle? Peace. Third candle? Joy. And the fourth candle? Love. And today is the final candle. It's called the Christ candle. And so can I invite... Um, Simon and Rachel and their son, Caden, uh, if you could just come and uh, light the Christ candle. Matches are always more reliable. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Simon, Rachel, and Caden. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Will you join me to pray together uh, this prayer that you see on the screen? O God of hope, peace, joy, and love, has Mary and Joseph welcomed you into the world. Now help us welcome you into our lives. Give us courage to hope, strength to see peace, fill our spirits with joy and our hearts with love. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord of all. Amen. Let us stand as we worship the Lord together.
with you and also with you. Let us say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these laws in our hearts. You may sit or kneel as we continue. Uh, in responsive prayer. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Savior of the world. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins before him. God our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Savior, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
receive God's grace and His forgiveness. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to Himself, that you may behold the glory of His Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together, the Gloria in Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us say together the collect for Christmas Eve. Almighty God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that, as we joyfully receive him for our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading read to us by our sister Esther. The first reading for this evening is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom. To establish it, and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please stand for the reading of the gospel? The gospel according to Matthew chapter 1 and beginning at verse 1. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, and from verse 17 to 25. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Continuing at verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. And from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed, to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, 
resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Will you bow your hearts with me in prayer? Father, we thank you for the joy of Christmas as we remember the precious gift of your Son to us, born in a manger to save us from our sins. Thank you, Lord. And now, Lord, we pray, open our eyes that we may behold you in your word and that, Lord, we may be transformed to be more and more like you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And would you please be seated? Christmas is one of the most celebrated uh, occasions in the world. It's a special time for a whole variety of reasons. But today I want to ask you to reflect and think for yourself, what's so special about Christmas for you? And I'm not looking for the politically correct answer. I'm asking you to reflect on what Christmas truly means to you. Why is Christmas so special to you personally? Because friends, people celebrate Christmas for a whole variety of reasons. One is, it's time to be with the family, have special food, an occasion to get together with loved ones. It's also a time for holidays, although this year it's more staycations. It's a time where we have parties and oftentimes there is no reference to Jesus. So many celebrate Jesus, uh, Christmas without reference to Jesus. A story is told about a preacher who was preaching at a Christmas service where a well-known uh, historian who was very skeptical about Christianity was present. And so this well-known historian went to the service, Christmas service because he was encouraged by his family members to come along. And so he attended the service and uh, at the end of the service, he went up to the preacher and with a broad smile, he said, I finally figured out why people like Christmas. A baby threatens nobody, and so Christmas is a happy event that means nothing at all. A baby threatens nobody, and so Christmas is a happy event that means nothing at all. Friends, how far that is from the truth, from the reality of who that baby in a manger in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago was. The identity of that baby, that God became flesh and dwelt among us. That, my friends, is the wonder of Christmas. And so Christmas is a special time because it's a season where we especially remember the birth of Jesus has the greatest gift that we have received. God's precious gift to us of His Son. 
And so in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the prophet, 700 years gave this prophecy. To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And a key word there is given. A child is born, but a son is given. It's the son of God. Is given. And it's a gift, friends, to be received with open hands, to receive this gift that God has given. Each of us falls into one of three groups. One group would be those who have yet to receive this gift for whatever reason. It could be doubts, it could be fears. And I pray that this Christmas, that your heart would be open to this gift that God has given to you and to me. Second group that some of you may be in are those who have received this gift perhaps years ago, but your relationship with Jesus is not close. He's Savior, but He's not Lord. He's not Lord over every area of your life. And the third group, those who have received the gift of the Son and who are walking closely with Him, may you continue to press on and persevere in the midst of the darkness that Jesus is the light of the world and that you will continue to be faithful and to proclaim this light. So as we focus on Matthew chapter 1, I want to share three truths about why Christmas is so special. Why Christmas is so special. The first truth is the Messiah has come. Of course, the first question is, we may ask is, what is Messiah? Who is Messiah? What does Messiah mean? So Messiah is Hebrew for the anointed one, the anointed king, who will come to and prophesy in Scripture whom God will send, who will fulfill the hopes of Israel, who will bring justice, who will bring righteousness, who will rule over Israel and rule over the earth. That's the Messiah. And the Greek word for Messiah is Christos, from which we get the, the word Christ. So the Messiah has come, is the anointed king, the one that was prophesied in Scripture has come in Christ. And so Jesus Christ, Jesus' name is Jesus. Christ is actually not a name, right? Because you know Christ is now the anointed one. So it's Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the anointed one, Jesus Christ. And so Matthew begins his gospel with a long genealogy. Aren't you glad I didn't read verses 3 to 16? It's many names. But actually, friends, there's so much truth here, gems within the genealogy. When one wants to tell a story, one must have a very good beginning, right? So we must ask ourselves, why does Matthew start with so many names? And this, you know, Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah. It just goes on and on for 16 verses. The question is why? We may sometimes gloss over it, but as we think about Matthew's gospel and the original readers, They were the Jewish Christians who had just come out of Judaism, just come out of the synagogues in their faith in Jesus. And so to them, as they read this, it comes alive. Friends, it's like you and I in our storeroom, you know, we, we come across a book that's old and dusty, and it's our family tree. Going back generations after generations, won't you be excited to read it? To find out who your ancestors were across the generations, who they married, how many children they had. So that's the, what's going through the minds of the Jewish believers. But friends, for you and I, 
as we read the scriptures, these names then will come alive to us. Because you and I, by faith, are sons of Abraham. Galatians 3, verse 7. You and I are sons of Abraham. So, while this was, a, was especially real to the Jewish Christians when it was written, it needs to come alive to you and to me. That God is a God of history and He has... And that Christ the Messiah has come. And so, as we look at the genealogy, it begins by saying the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So the Messiah has come, and he's the promised one. He has come from Abraham. So he traces all the way from Abraham, verse 2, all the way down to David, and then to the deportation to, to Babylon, which is the exile, and then to Christ. So when you look at verse 1 and verse 16, it begins with Jesus Christ and it ends with Christ. So the purpose of Matthew is, yes, to trace the history, but most significantly is to present the central character to us, the central figure, the Messiah. Jesus has come. And he's the son of Abraham, he's the son of David. Son of Abraham because right there in Genesis 12, God's blessing and covenant to Abraham that through Abraham, all the nations will be blessed. Through Abraham and Abraham's seed, his offspring. And then for David, it goes down to David. David, as we know, God promised David that his house will be for eternity, that there will be always be someone of the house of David to lead Israel. And so there are, there are many prophetic, what they call messianic scriptures pointing to the coming Messiah. Being from the Davidic line, from the seed of David. I just give you one example, and it's from Jeremiah 33. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to the book of Jeremiah 33. And I'll read to you from verse 15 to 17. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. Can you see that? Jeremiah is writing centuries after King David. And so this is the, the expectation and the prophecy that one from the seed of Abraham and then from the seed of David will be the Messiah. And it's come to fulfillment. Isn't that amazing? And friends, it also speaks about the generations. So verse 17, so all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations, and from David to the deport exile to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. You see the repetition of 14 generations. Friends, this is not meant to be precise, arithmetic. That's a theological message. The theological message is God is a God of history, and history is not haphazard. His purposes unfold. And when we think about the number 14, it's seven times two. Seven in Scripture has a special significance. God created the world in six days. He rested on the seventh day. In Israel, when they worked the land, they, six years, the seventh year, it lies fallow. The year of Jubilee, after seven periods of seven years, the 50th year, slaves are set free. All debts are forgiven. The number seven 
has tremendous significance. And as we think about this, 14 generations, which is two sevens, and you have three times, so it's six sevens. What does it speak? It speaks about Christ coming, and He's the seven seven. In Christ, you and I receive rest. Rest will come to us only through Jesus. That's why Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So the genealogy points to Christ. The genealogy tells us that God is the God of history. And he's worked his purposes from Abraham to David to the exile, and Christ has come. Now, the genealogy also tells us many other things. One is women are involved. In those, in those days, genealogies are primarily male. But here you have five women. And I don't have time to go into the details, but it includes women, it includes Gentiles, and it includes people who are imperfect. So just give you three examples. Verse 3, you have the mention of Tama. Tama committed incest with Judah, her father-in-law. In verse 5, you have mention of Rahab, who was a prostitute who helped the spies that Joshua sent to Jericho. But her background was she was a prostitute. Then you have David in verse 6. How does Matthew speak about David in verse 6? Jesse, the father of David, the king. And David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah. Why does Matthew have to include that phrase, wife of Uriah? brings back the sin of David who lusted after Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, who had Uriah killed. So not only is he an adulterer, but he's a murderer. Friends, as we read the genealogy, it speaks to us that notwithstanding our weaknesses and our blemishes, God is a God full of grace. But we need to exercise faith. We need to repent of our sins. Has David repented? In Psalm 51. To repent of our sins, turn from our wicked ways, and put our faith in the Lord. And that He will redeem and rescue us from our past. What, however messy our past is. So this genealogy pointing to the Messiah is not a perfect picture. But God has entered into the brokenness of this world and He seeks to enter into the brokenness of our lives and to fulfill His purpose for you and for me. The genealogy ends with Joseph. And as you look at verse 16, it says, Jacob, the father of Joseph. But then it doesn't say the, the fa Joseph, the father of Jesus. It says, Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Christ. So yes, the Messiah comes from the David line. Joseph is from the line of David. He's a son of David. But he's not the biological father. He's the adoptive father of Jesus. And now we come to how Joseph responded to the coming of the Messiah. And we want to see some lessons there. And so we are at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. There's a word there, betrothed. I think it's a word that we're not familiar with nowadays. Nowadays, perhaps it's engagement. But betrothed is stronger than engagement. 
to be betrothed to someone in those days is your, your considered husband and wife, but the wife continues to stay in the parents' house, in her parents' house, and there are no sexual relationships. Usually last for about a year. And lo and behold, it is during this period of betrothal that Mary becomes pregnant. What does Joseph do? Based on Old Testament, Mary should be stoned or there be a public trial and she be humiliated and shamed. What would you do? The husband's here. Your wife becomes pregnant before, before the formal marriage arrangements ceremony. We read in verse 19, Joseph's response, and her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. We see the kindness of Joseph, the forgiveness of Joseph. At this point, he, he, he does not know, or the angel has not revealed to him what he's supposed to do, and, and that the baby is conceived by the Holy Spirit. But he, he resolves to divorce her quietly. And it's, has he considered these things? We are in verse 20. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And so now the angel says, don't divorce her quietly. Go through the marriage. Friends, is that easy or difficult? It's difficult, right? Because now, all the neighbours, everyone in the society will then say, who is the culprit? They will suspect Joseph, right? So friends, as we look at, at Joseph's response, he obeyed, right? Verse 24, Joseph woke from sleep. He did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Friends, the lesson for us is to obey even when it's difficult. And the Lord often calls us to do things that require sacrifice, that will involve perhaps scorn, opposition. And so from Joseph, we learn these two things. One is kindness. In the way in which he treated Mary to desire to divorce her privately. Secondly, when the angel told him, marry her, and that would involve him being implicated as the cause of Mary's pregnancy before the wedding ceremony, he obeyed, even though it was difficult. So why Christmas is so special? The Messiah has come, and he calls us to follow him and to obey him. The second reason why Christmas is special, is the Messiah saves his people from their sins. So this is verse 21. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. You'll call his name Jesus. Jesus in Greek is Jesus, in Hebrew is Yeshua. What does it mean? It means God is salvation, God saves. So Jesus' name describes the purpose that he sent. He sent to save his people from their sins. The other thing to note is that it doesn't say Jesus will, is, is going to save everyone from their sins. Save his people. Not just the Jews, but the Gentiles. Jews and Gentiles who put their faith in Jesus. Jesus 
will save His people, those who put their faith in Him. Christmas is special because the Messiah has come and He saves us from our sins. Because sin separates us from God. And how did Jesus save us from our sins? He became sin. He became a curse. So that you and I will be set free from sin. And that's why when John the Baptist saw Jesus, what did John the Baptist say? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is the Lamb of God, sacrificed as the sinless one for your sin and my sin. And His coming as a Lamb to save us from our sins involved humility, involved an emptying of Himself, of the glory that He had with the Father to take on human flesh and to be obedient to death, death on the cross. Paul in Corinthians describes the ministry of Jesus this way. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. Friends, this is powerful. Christmas is special because the Messiah has come. Christmas is special because the Messiah saves us from our sins that he humbled himself. He left his father's home in glory in heaven and he came, he emptied himself, took the form of a servant, became obedient to death, even death on the cross. He became poor, emptied himself of that glory. He became poor physically because Mary and Joseph were from a poor family. They had no room in the inn. Jesus was born in a manger, an animal's feeding trough. The sad thing is that the majority of the Jews are still waiting for the Messiah. Because in Jewish expectations, they interpreted that the Messiah will come at the end of human history as a political ruler to free Israel. Christmas is special because God, in His amazing plan, chose to come in the middle of human history as a suffering Messiah. Friends, that's the wonder of Christmas. That God Himself comes. The second person of the Godhead comes. And so we come to the third reason. The Messiah is Emmanuel, God with us. And so Matthew quotes the prophecy from Isaiah, and this time it's from Isaiah 7 verse 14. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which means God with us. Christmas is special because God himself has come to save us from our sins. Jesus is God in the flesh. The divine has become hum human. As we think about the greatest miracle in Christianity, we often think about the resurrection or we think about the virgin birth or we think about atonement or we think about some great miracle. But actually, as you think about it, it all flows from the miracle of the incarnation. That God himself, in the second person of the Godhead, Jesus, who was there at creation, the world was created through him. But he became human while remaining God. Fully God, fully man. That's the tremendous mystery of the incarnation. J.I. Packer, 
who recently went home to be with the Lord, an Anglican theologian and author, uh, says this in his uh, classic book, Knowing God. It is from misbelief or at least inadequate belief about the incarnation that difficulties at other points in the gospel story usually spring. But once the incarnation is grasped as a reality, these other difficulties dissolve. Powerful words to cause us to think about the miracle of the incarnation that God himself has become flesh, that in this child, in this baby, is God as a helpless babe. Once we grasp that, everything else falls into place. Not only that, the incarnation means that Jesus understands our situation because he's been through it, because he's entered into our humanity. And that's why the, the writer of the Hebrews says, we have a high priest. We do not have a high priest who's unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but is able to understand all that we go through in life. And in the passage from Isaiah chapter 9, which we read, four names are given for Jesus. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. But the first one, Wonderful Counselor. He is a wonderful counselor because he has entered into our humanity and he understands what we go through in life. Have you been betrayed? He was. Have you been deserted by your friends? He was. Have you been ridiculed and opposed? He was. Have you felt abandoned by God? He was. That's why on the cross he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So through the incarnation, Jesus has entered into our humanity. He is our wonderful counselor. We can go to him. We can approach him. And he will meet our needs as we draw near to him. He will draw near to us. So Jesus is God with us. He is Emmanuel. The question for us is, are we with him? Jesus is God with us. Are we with him? When he appointed the 12 apostles, he said, he asked them, whom he chose, so that they might be with him. So Mark 3 verse 14, Jesus appointed 12 whom he named apostles so that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. God is with us, but are we with him? Are we spending time with him? Are we spending time in his word? And so this Christmas and even as we enter into the new year, what is our relationship with the Lord Will we also have the courage to obey Him? He is God with us. Are we with Him? Are we obeying Him? That He is both Saviour and Lord. So friends, this Christmas, don't miss the Christ in Christmas. Don't miss the Christ in Christmas. What's so special about Christmas? The Messiah has come. In the fullness of time. God sent Jesus, born in a manger in Bethlehem, a small town, to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he saves his people from their sins, and he is the Messiah, who is Emmanuel, God with us. He has entered into our humanity, and he is our wonderful Counselor. So this Christmas, will you give your heart afresh to Jesus? Will you bow your hearts with me in prayer? Father, we thank you for the joy of Christmas. Lord, help us to respond to you. There may be some here, 
and you've not received this gift, the gift of a father's heart, the gift of his son, will you open your heart to him? Perhaps you're at home, you're listening to this message. There's a brokenness. Life has not treated you well and you're at your wit's end. Jesus entered into our humanity and he can meet you at your point of need, whatever that is. If you will turn to him, ask him to forgive you of your sins and receive him as Savior and Lord. Perhaps for others, you've received this gift, but Jesus is not Lord over your life. Many other things clamor for your attention and for your devotion and for your loyalty. Jesus is calling you. Will you give him your heart? Because Jesus gave his all on the cross for you. Jesus left heaven, emptied himself of the glory he had with the Father to be born as a servant and to be obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Will you renew your life and, your, and give your heart afresh to Jesus? because he's worthy of it all. Father, we pray your presence to be with us and with our households and with our families. May we be renewed in our hearts, renewed in our spirits, Lord, to serve you because you are our Messiah, the anointed King who has rescued us and who desires to give us the fullness of life and to give us rest from all that wearies us as we put our trust in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you stand as we respond with this carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Let us remain standing as we reaffirm, reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, for all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven <coughs> and seated at the right. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. From the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Through one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel for a time of intercession by our sister Sheila. Let us pray. Joy to the world, the Messiah has come. Dear Father, we want to thank you and praise you that we can remember this day and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. We thank you that you sent Jesus to this world to save us from our sins so that we who believe in you will have eternal life. We just want to thank you for this word that we received from Reverend Jeremy. We thank you, Lord, that it has spoken, that your word that has gone forth, Lord, will not return back to your void. Lord, I pray that you would give us eyes of understanding, open our eyes to know your word, to understand your truth. Maybe there are many things we don't know and we feel that we are struggling and we feel that we do not know how to really grasp what your word says. But I thank you and praise you in your word says that if we truly seek you with all of our hearts, we will be found of you. And also your word in John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. We do want to thank you, Lord, for all that has been happening around us. Though difficult, we have had a very difficult year, not only in Singapore, but in the rest of the world. And many are still suffering from this COVID-19. God, we want to pray that your hand, Lord, will continue to encourage people will continue to heal them, that you would bring about a restoration to their physical bodies, and also, Lord, a hungering heart to know your truth, to know who this Messiah is during this Christmas time. Father, we want to thank you that our hope is in you. We want to remember those who are suffering, especially during this winter time, there are many who are homeless, the poor. And God, I pray that you would send your angels and use us too, Lord, to reach out to those who are suffering at this time, who really need a nice hot meal, a place to stay. And so, Father, we pray that this Christmas we will do something that really brings honor and glory to your name. And that we will continue doing it, Lord, because that is what you desire of us. We thank you that the vaccines are here. We thank you, Lord, that you have um, 
brought this about and great advancement. We thank you for it. We pray that as they are being administered to people, that people will be protected and that they will also experience, Lord, health once again. Oh, hallelujah. We want to pray for the restrictions. I know many people are waiting for the 28th. And uh, more, more, ga- uh, more people can gather together. More people can be in the households visiting. And so we pray, Father, that as we come to the end of the year, that people will still be vigilant, that they will be careful, wear their masks, that they will still practice social distancing, and that, Lord, they be responsible. Because we know that year end is such that everybody looks forward to the new year, and there's much partying and celebration that's happening. Lord, I want to thank you for all that you have shown us thus far in this church, in our lives, there's much to be grateful to you for, Lord. And so, Father, I pray that our hearts will long for you and desire to know you more and more. We remember right now, God, Yemen, There are many, Lord, who are starving. And there's food shortages in that land. Lord, we pray that you would raise up more aid to be sent to Yemen. Mm -hmm. Many children are dying. And yet, Lord, many are dying without knowing you. So I pray that as we consider your word and consider the things that you want us to do, that we will take up your cross and follow you and be a light where you send us to. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us stand together as we share the peace with one another. This holy night the angels sang Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We share the peace with one another with non-touch gestures.
bring you a couple of announcements. But first, I want to uh, welcome those who are visiting with us. I can see a number of new faces. Can you just wave your hand? You're here for the first time. Yeah, okay, wonderful. Welcome you. Yeah, it's great that you, to have you uh, join us. Uh, just to let you know that our regular Sunday services are at 8.45 a.m. And uh, we will be having a New Year's Day service on the 1st of January. So this period always I tend to lose sense of what day we are in. Eh? So, uh, we have a Christmas service tomorrow morning. We have uh, 8.45 a.m. Sunday service on the 27th of December. And then New Year's Day, 1st January, Friday, uh, 9 a.m., we have a special guest speaker, Reverend Timothy Chow. So, he'll be here uh, to usher us into the new year with uh, the Lord's um, word for us for 2021. Uh, and... Um, there will also be opportunity for testimonies. Uh, so if you have a testimony to share uh, on New Year's Day, uh, please look for Leon, the handsome guy over here. Okay, um, we are assessing the need for registration in the new year for January 1st onwards. So we are awaiting the detailed guidelines for Phase 3. Uh, so we will get back to you uh, shortly with regards to registration uh, for services in the new year. Okay, with that, shall we stand as we close in prayer? And wish you all a very uh, blessed Christmas. We are a few minutes away. Uh, really wish all of you a very uh, blessed Christmas and with your families as well. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the joy of knowing you. And thank you for the love you have for us in sending Jesus as a helpless babe to redeem us, to rescue us, and to set us free. And so, Father, we thank you that you are our Messiah who loves us and who desires to shepherd us and guide us, Lord, even in these troubled times. We pray keep our, that as we keep our eyes on you, you will keep us safe. Remove our fears as we enter into a new year with fresh hopes and with renewed faith, trusting in you that you are the God of history and that you are working out your purposes and that even as the Messiah has come, that you are coming again for your church. May we be ready. May we be your holy bride. And so Christ, who by becoming a man, brought hope to the world, fill you with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Name of Christ. Amen. We have the closing song, Joy to the World.
service is over, but just one very important announcement uh, for future services. When you come, please remember to download the Trace Together app or the Trace Together token because this is required in future when the phase three opens up. Okay, so uh, have a very blessed Christmas for those on the zone A and C. Please go out through the front doors and don't be just the same way as you came in through the back entrance. Good night and have a very blessed Christmas. Talking back.